today, I wanted to just really hit on something, dealing with pain. I asked my mom one day, I said, Mom, I said, would you buy me a deck of cards? She says, Junior, I don't gamble in my house. Ain't no cards coming in my house. I said, Mom, I don't need them for gambling. I don't want them for gambling. I just need a deck of cards, Mom. My mom, for years, from the time I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I never saw a woman take so much physical abuse than the way I've seen my mother be every freaking day of my life. But I can't help her because I'm not strong enough. I don't have the muscle to get these men off my mother. My mother's a very high yellow woman and every time they hit her, she would bleed from her eyes. She would walk around for days with sunglasses on in the house. I said, Ma, I need a deck of cards. Last altercation we got in, my stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face. My stepfather hit my mama so hard in the face, I called her. And I looked at him with this rage and this pain in my eyes. Like one day, one day. And I took this deck of cards. I couldn't live in the house, so I had to live in the garage. And after this last altercation we had with this guy, I ran to my garage and I grabbed this deck of cards. And I flipped a seven. And I started doing seven push-ups. I flipped a six, I did six. I flipped a nine, I did nine. I flipped a two, I did two. I flipped another nine, I did nine. Until I got all the way through the deck. Jack, Queen, King, work 10. Aces, 25s, and Jokers, 50. Until I got sick and tired of what pain felt like in my gut. It didn't even matter to me no more. Because I started shuffling them all over again, and that's when I started doing my sit-ups. Because I wanted to make sure sports wasn't the reason why I started training. It was to make sure man never put his hands on my mama again. And I told my mama, no pain, no pain will ever stop me from taking care of you and my brothers and sisters. That's why I started doing what I started doing. Sports was a byproduct of, of what people started to see. It was the behind the scenes that was driving me crazy. There's two sides of pain that I don't think a lot of people really understand. There's one side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain. But then there's another side of pain that's called effort. It's called glory. It's called if you can find a way to push through pain, there's something greater on the other side of it. And if you never tap into it, it's because the first time you felt that you backed off. The first time you felt ah, that burn, the first time you felt that ah, it's too much. And we rationalize with ourselves to where we automatically stop. That's why a bunch of us give up so much in life so quickly. That's why kids have a problem finishing things in today's time. Because as soon as they feel a small bit of discomfort, of things ain't right, oh, they're gone. I can't do it no more. But suppose I told you the greatest pain of my life is the reason I'm standing here. I dare you to take a little pain. Go, go through it. You're not gonna die because you're feeling a little pain. You ain't gonna die. At the end of pain is success. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year, but eventually it will subside. 
and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. On the other side of that pain, on the other side of that pain, on the other side of that pain, is your promise. At 10 years old, I picked up these deck of cards, and one day I counted them, and I found out it was 52 of them in the deck of cards, 52. And I turned my greatest pain into in my business with the greatest achievement ever is the touch of the Umbali Trophy. 52 cards. And ironically, my number ended up being 52. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your spouse, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. If you want something out of life, if you want to change yourself, if you want to acquire something, if there's some goal that you want to reach, changing your behaviors, overcoming negative habits, it's challenging, it's hard. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. The only thing that's gonna make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. If you look at somebody who's really successful and you think, wow, I mean, they're, they're so amazing, they're such a genius, you gotta dig underneath and you gotta remember something. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. If you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. How much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? When you start thinking about that, we don't know. Most of us don't use the stuff that we have brought into the universe. Stop wasting valuable time. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative. The power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. What this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man or a woman is in that state of mind in which he or she knows exactly what he or she wants and is fully determined not to quit until they find it. There's greatness in you and you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. I'm gonna harness my will and I'm not gonna let anything stop me. I deserve this.
Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. You are unstoppable. Live your life with passion, with some drive. Most of us go through life with our brakes on, holding back. Decide that you're going to push yourself. You've got to focus on you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Selling yourself on your ability to perform a job, to achieve a certain objective. Telling yourself every day, here I go again. And I got what it takes. This is my day and nothing out here is going to stop me. The most powerful tool that you have right now in your life, in your body, is your mind. That's why the enemy fights you in your mind. The devil doesn't have to tie you up for you to be bound. He just has to tie up your head. With stress, with worry, with aggravation, with low self-esteem, with pettiness, with anger, with hostility, with rebellion. And he can make you physically sick because your mind is sick. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh yes, it's going to be some struggles. It's going to be some challenges. It's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. If you can take it, you can make it. If you can take it, you can make it. All right, you train, you fight way harder than those other guys, and you win. You get out from under. If you can take it, you can make it. You can do this. Just got to believe you can. There's some things I'm not taking with me in the new year. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. Don't shake yourself around the comings and goings of this world. Don't shape your opinions and your attitudes around circumstances that you cannot change. If you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now, you better step into this moment. As soon as you decide to stop looking for answers in other people and miracles somewhere down the yellow brick road and click the heel to your mind, you could have been free years ago. If you can get your mind out, you can get your money out. You can get your family out. You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hates you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of this. 
tell him I'm coming out here first. There's not a person on my team in 16 years that has consistently beat me to the ball every play. That ain't got nothing to do with talent. That's just got everything to do with effort. Nothing else. 15 straight years. 12 Pro Bowls later. If you want numbers. I done saw all of it. And the only thing that's kept me around is my effort. So when you put on this, all I ever knew, because I wasn't a number one recruit, I wasn't a number one linebacker, I wasn't even in the media guy. All I ever knew was effort will get me seen on tape. Effort will get me noticed to get to the league. Effort would one day take care of my mom and my kids. Effort. Which is between you and you. Nobody else can give you effort. Effort is with inside, man. And I'm still grinding because the next kid is talking about he getting too old. Keep watching me if I am. Nobody ain't got to convince me of what I do. I do what I do because I do what I do. Because I'm built from something. And man didn't create it. Every one of you men in here have that opportunity, man. But ask yourself the question personally. How much time you really wasting? real or do you really represent this I represent it because it's all I had it's only brotherhood I ever been formed to that's why when I see y'all perform on Saturdays that is my peace that's why I run to the hotels I don't need to talk to nobody before my games I just need to see what I once came from I sat in these same chairs you guys sat in man I sat around the greatest athletes in the world and then I found myself totally different because everybody was asking the question, who is this kid? I'm just sharing my story to tell y'all, every time you think somebody got it good, man, they ain't always good. Somebody just, some, some people just make up their mind and they just grind and say the heck with it, man. Because sometimes that's all you can do. How much of our brains are we really going to use? I use mine to tell somebody today, September 11th, when I step on the field against the Pittsburgh Citizens, if that's what God will is, there's no other man out there willing to give up what I'm willing to give up. I said that in 1993, when I said I wanted to be the greatest hurricane, and the only thing that I got in the middle of all of that distance is the only thing that follows work is results. There's no other blueprint. I ain't got no other secrets to tell y'all today. I ain't come here for nothing else but to tell you, if you want to do something, work at it. You want a better relationship with God, work at it. You want to understand why pulling your pants up is important, why yes ma'am and no ma'am is important, why being in the meeting with complete silence when somebody walks in, because it's presence and essence that determines respect. That's all we talking about. The power of respect is never to disrespect. That's why I was the first one sitting down in the meeting. Um, I ain't got nothing to say. Y'all do y'all, I'm good. I gotta listen, something out there I need to grab from it. Sitting on the same football field at UM, 1993. And I made a quote. And that some people call it controversy, I call it confidence. I said that I might be the greatest player to ever walk up out of the University of Miami. I did not say that because I thought I was better than everybody else. I said that simply because I was willing to put in the work to now be back here 18 years later and tell you the only brotherhood I still have. You've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes, I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made.
Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. It sits on my chest in a shirt form. But the eye of that real hurricane is found in my heart. Is this where it all came from? Same path y'all walk. Same calves y'all going in. Same green tree y'all walking up and down. I, mean, I had one pair of jeans in college for at least two years. At least two years. My dreams don't live down there. That's what my granddad used to tell me. When I used to walk in them projects, I look down, I see crack needles. I see bullets. I see blood stains. But when I looked in the sky, I saw my dreams. I saw my opportunity. When I would go to school, they would tell me I was too dumb. They told me I'd be like my father, like my family, selling dope, going to the penitentiary, never seeing what the real world would be. See, I was a kid, couldn't read till it was 16. But my dream was bigger than my reality. I'm telling you, young king, keep fighting because your life depends on it. Just like when you get hit with that bullet and your boy is telling you don't stop breathing, don't stop fighting, you still got life to live. Because if you lay there in your pool of blood, you're going to die there. Young king, young king, learn how to fight for your purpose. And not the money. And not the money. You go after and you give it all you have. If you lose, at least you try, man. I failed. It's ten times more of a man than someone said, what if? Because what if never went to the arena? That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. You think something's wrong, maybe it's time to stop. No, it's time to move for your first. Mentally, you must believe it before you physically start. I choose to rise, not fall. I choose to live, not die. Today will be that day. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now, right here. Belief will change my world. If it will work out for me, I will define myself. I will never go out, not long I've given everything I've got. Because who am I? I have the chance. If you only have 24 hours in a day, your success is dependent upon how you use the 24. You gotta hear me, people talk about Oprah Winfrey, you know, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, listen to me, I don't care how much money you make, you only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. That's it, listen to me, that's it, you get 24. I don't care if you broke, you grew up broke, I don't care if you grew up rich, I don't care if you're in college, you're not in college, you only get 24 hours, and I blew up literally. I went from being a high school dropout to selling 6,000 books in less than six months. What happened? My 24 hours. 
I was like, okay, Eric, you got to get a grip on your 24 hours because you're about to be broke for the rest of your life. And that's all I need you to do for me. I can tell you all about your life if you just write down your 24-hour schedule for me and you let me look at it. I can tell you where you're going to be in five years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 10 years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 20 years if you keep that schedule. I had a teacher in eighth grade. Eighth grade tell me I wasn't going to make it in high school. Eighth grade, I had a teacher telling me that foolishness. And what did I do? I proved them right. I went to high school wilding out. Ninth grade year, wild out so bad, that school kicked me out. They was like, you know, we can't even take this no more. Kick you out. Go to another school. I completely flunked that. Go to a third school and finally begin to get my act together. I'm proving everybody who did not believe in me right, and the few people who did believe in me, I'm proving them wrong. Again, we're dealing with it matters of the heart now. A lot of times we behave in the way we behave because we don't feel like we got worth or value. We don't really recognize the heritage of who we are and what we can do. So we just on that, I'm just gonna do whatever and get a couple laughs. But when you recognize how great you are, when you recognize that champion that's inside you, you'll say, you know what, I got more to give. There's more to life than this right here. I deserve better, you deserve better. And then you'll say, you know what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna prove everybody who didn't believe in me wrong. And the few people who do believe in me, I'm going to prove them right. And when you do that, everything inside your life changes. I just start saying, before I make decisions, I just start saying, okay, is this going to make my mama proud or all the people that's hating on me? Is this going to make them say, see, I told you. I'm in India speaking. I found out the culture in India, there in Bangalore where I was, has the highest suicide rate because if these kids do not do well in high school, they know they won't go to college and they know for the rest of their lives they'll end up in poverty and they said, I'd rather die than be in poverty. That's what you call desperation. But you gonna settle for whatever the world gives you? You gonna settle for living how your mom and dad live now? I'm telling y'all, my young friends, you ain't gotta settle for that. Some of you going to sleep and you don't deserve to be, you don't deserve rest. You lazy, you don't deserve rest. Rest is for people who work. You ain't doing nothing. Every day you chilling. You need to know your why, and my why wakes me up every single morning. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now because I care about you. I'm telling you right now because I've been there, I've done that. You've been in it for three years and you about to quit. You've been doing it for five years and it don't look like you think. You put all your money in it. You put all your time in it. People are looking at you crazy. Five years you've invested, oh. You put too much in it to quit now. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. If this my time, this is my moment. Tomorrow, tomorrow, ain't no such thing as tomorrow. What does your dream look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind.